Hello once again, and thanks for taking a moment to catch up through my regular Journeys and Insights update. We're now well into the month of May, which the Church has long dedicated to Mary, the mother of Jesus. In fact, the idea of dedicating an entire month to the Blessed Mother, with special devotions offered each day, began sometime in the 17th century, though it wasn't always designated for May. It's altogether fitting that we do so at the time of the year when springtime appears, when the darkness of winter gives way to the renewal and the warmth of sunshine and longer days. It's a perfect analogy for the dawn of hope that Mary made possible with her ascent to the Father's will, allowing herself to become the vessel of God's unconditional love for humanity. Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word, was her perfect response. In every instance, Mary shows us the way, leading us always to her son. At the wedding feast of Cana, she says to the servers, do whatever he tells you. It's a simple and straightforward instruction, which they follow, and soon there was wine in abundance the first miracle of Jesus recorded in the New Testament. And then, of course, it was Mary who abided with her son till the very end, keeping watch at the foot of the cross as Jesus fulfilled the Father's will, just as she had when God chose her to bear Jesus into the world. I encourage you in this month of Mary to reflect on her example as a way to discern God's unique call in your own life. Imagine her astonishment, her anxiety, and even apprehension when the angel appeared to her to announce the mission God had chosen especially for her. And yet she said, yes. She gave herself fully to God's will, trusting that her faith would not be disappointed. It's precisely this act of abandonment and unflinching trust that we are asked also to demonstrate as followers of Jesus. The path will be unpredictable and may at times prove difficult, but we have only to summon the courage to say yes and to allow God's will to be done unto us, to unfold as he chooses in his own time and according to his purposes. In your parishes and in your homes, I implore you to honor Mary, to refer to her as a timeless role model who the church has exalted all because she said yes to God and allowed him to reveal his gift of salvation first through her. Next week on May 21st, I'll be presiding over the ordination to the permanent diaconate. Three very fine men, Mark Balkowski, Timothy Haley, and Andrew Michael, will be giving of themselves in this sacred rite to serve our diocese and their parishes as permanent deacons. Like Mary, they have discerned the call of God in their lives and have said yes to what God has asked of them. We pray for them and for their families, and we honor their commitment to serve as ordained ministers. May their example of faithfulness and true service inspire others to likewise be open to the spirit and will of God. As bishop, I'm so grateful for their witness and for this opportunity to celebrate the fulfillment of their journey. Their ordination is indeed a cause of celebration for our entire diocese. Over the past week or so, the nation's eyes have been turned to the Supreme Court and an impending decision that may result in the overturn of Roe versus Wade. While we pray and work, to bring about respect for the sanctity of life from conception to natural death, we must also pray and provide support for those mothers who face the daunting circumstances of unplanned and even unwanted pregnancies. It's precisely this mission that's carried out each and every day at our Mother Teresa home and at our St. Gianna Mola Pregnancy Outreach Centers. We must do all we can to be with these women in overcoming their anxieties and fears, and to let them know they are not alone, 
and that there are resources available to them and their newborns. Our zeal must not just be for a political cause, but for the support of life and the well-being of mothers and their children at the earliest stages when they most need the support of others. Finally, I ask that you continue to keep the people of Ukraine constantly in your prayers, that their immense suffering and the evil that continues to be inflicted upon them may end. Our heart aches at the images and accounts of all that they are having to endure. May the Lord in his goodness restore peace to their troubled land. I wish you and all those whom you love a safe and blessed weekend ahead and look forward to speaking with you again very soon. God bless.